Hello, and welcome to the Reykjavik News Desk. I'm Andy Sophia Fontaine, and these are the weekend's top stories in Iceland. If you like the content that you see here, be sure and like and subscribe. And if you really like the content that you see here, check out the Patreon link in the description below to see what kind of goodies you can get just by kicking a little extra coin our way. And now, the weekend's top stories. It's all quiet on the volcanic front for now. As reported last week, Katla the volcano was showing some seismic activity, in particular in the caldera. There were at least two tremors measured above a magnitude of four. And so scientists and civic protection put the area on a state of alert. But now it appears as though the volcanoes returned to a state of normal dormancy. And the situation is still being monitored very closely. But for now, it appears as though we're out of the woods. Now, Seismic activity in and around the volcano is not necessarily cause for concern. As you know, Iceland lies on a series of major fault lines and rests on two tectonic plates, in fact. So there's hundreds of little earthquakes happening every single day. The reason why this particular volcano was being monitored closely and the reason why seismic activity in this volcano was being taken so seriously is because in 1918, when Katla last erupted, it was a massive eruption that had resulted in extensive and widespread glacial flooding, which is some of the bigger dangers that come from these volcanoes that are located underneath of glaciers. For now, though, things appear to be normal, but as with all things volcano, they're very unpredictable, and we'll just see what happens in the future. In terms of when it's going to erupt, we just never know. But rest assured, scientists are monitoring the situation very closely. The suspicious death of a woman found dead in her home in Selfoss, South Iceland in late April is now being investigated as a possible murder. Now, as I reported in the previous video, two men were initially taken into police custody in the wake of discovering this young woman. However, now only one is in police custody and his police detention has been extended to May 19th. As I said before, the police are being very scant on the details, but there's a couple things that we do know. First of all, the police have requested documentation from overseas as a part of their investigation, and the sister of the victim has very publicly declared that her sister was never involved in any drug use of any kind. As before, any new details that arise, I will keep you updated. In better news, the North Iceland town of Akureyri is getting more accessible. Now, you remember the name Harald de Thorleifsson, um, probably because he and Elon Musk got into a very public spat on Twitter. And that was a lot of fun to witness, sure. But what you should probably know about Harald is he's also a phil philanthropist. And one of the projects he's been involved in is a project called Ramp Up Iceland, wherein he hopes to build some 1,600 ramps all around the country. Well, now it seems Akureyri is one of the cities that is getting many access ramps. Many, if not most businesses around the downtown area of Akureyri will be getting access ramps in the coming weeks. So for those of you who have mobility issues and want to visit Iceland, Akureyri, at least in the next few weeks, is going to be more accessible for you. Reykjavik has already made great strides in being more accessible, but of course there's always room for improvement. On the lighter side, a cat, which went missing in Hetla, South Iceland, has been found in a parking garage in Reykjavik some 10 days after it went missing. The cat in question, Begla, which literally means bagel, um, was, <laughs> was found like in relatively good health, although it was very, very hungry. It was otherwise in really good spirits. Chipping cats that is inserting a little microchip under the skin is a very common practice in Iceland, and so it wasn't very difficult to track down the original owner. It's still a mystery how and why this cat made its 90-kilometer journey, but what we do know is that Begla is employed typically as the chief mouser at Landkreislan, which is a land restoration and reclamation group, and they have a center in Hecla, South Iceland, so it's very possible that Begla just wanted a vacation, like all workers are entitled to. Lastly, I'm pleased to report that the Biko ravens are still going strong. Now, in case you missed it, about 12 years ago, a raven pair named Hrap and Hrepna, which literally means raven in the masculine and feminine forms respectively, this raven pair set up their nest about 12 years ago over the entrance to the home supply store Biko in Selfoss, South Iceland. 
somebody had the brilliant idea to set up a live stream webcam there. And so every year since, every spring, we've been able to watch this raven family lay their eggs, hatch their hatchlings, raise up their young, and then have them fly the nest again. Well, as a small update, I'm pleased to report that five of the seven hatchlings have now made it so far that they're starting to grow feathers. And I'm really looking forward to seeing them grow strong and to see these babies flee the nest and make lives for themselves. You can check out the live stream yourself in the description below. I highly recommend it. It is sure to brighten your day. As I said in the previous video, the viewer poll, which is on my Patreon and is for $15 and $20 patrons, had the results of this poll have determined that my next single topic video is going to be about weird moments in Icelandic history. Well, this video, I am happy to say, is going to be coming out next week, so definitely look forward to that. I'm going to have so much fun making it, and I hope it's just as much fun for you to watch it, and I hope you learn something too. In any event, that's all for me today at News Desk. Again, if you like the content that you see here, be sure and like and subscribe, and if you really like the content that you see here, check out the Patreon in the description below, which reminds me, I want to thank Corinne Vasquez, Marion Ward, Christopher Hunter, Marion Moores, Kimberly McDaniel, and Iceman98 for being patrons on the $20 level, Laura Johnson for being a patron on the $15 level, and Stephen Ellis and Vive Carvajal Schaffner for being patrons on the $10 level. You folks rock. But that's all for me. Be good to each other.